I hunt files. There's no way to sugarcoat it. I hunt files. When day turns to night, an evil takes over the internet. An evil hiding among us. They could be teachers, police officers, but some people hide a dark secret. An attraction to children to combat this. Predator hunters, everyday people who strive to make the internet a better place, whose goal is to protect children from these disgusting people at all costs. I have received no updates, no responses, nothing at all. That's the way your messages, your videos, your voice, your pictures, your data are transmitted in little chunks called packets. The internet was created in 1983 and with it came a new place for illegal activities to be carried out. Of course, before this you had the black market and other off-the-grid ways to purchase banned goods, but the internet made it a hell of a lot easier. The most common place to find these disturbing stores are on the dark web, which is known to be home to many sellers advertising weapons, drugs, or remedies of children. But that doesn't mean that the clear web is completely clear. Hiding on regular social media sites are child predators. People with a sexual attraction to children who usually attempt to chat to them online in a sexual way or even go as far as to attempt to meet them in person to do unspeakable things. It's been a known problem, but what ways are there to combat it? No matter what you do, it seems your actions are futile, but that sure as hell doesn't stop people from trying. I used to be a pedophile hunter, yes. I hunt pedophiles. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Predator hunters are what some people would call heroes, others would call them vigilantes, but what drives them to do what they do? And is it right? There are very mixed opinions on the subject. In the UK, a case of child SA is reported every seven minutes. This is a serious issue that continues to grow by the day, and it seems as if there is no way to stop it. People still try though, as your everyday people will spend their evenings posing as children on popular sites, patiently waiting for a predator to take the bait. When a hunter makes a fake account pretending to be a minor, it is called a decoy or a decoy account. These accounts tend to have basic information such as their name, possibly their age, and a photograph of a young looking boy or girl, usually used with consent from the featured party. It usually doesn't take long for a predator to message the bait account, and the first thing most hunters tend to do is specifically state their age so that everything from that point on can be used as evidence. It's quite a well known fact that if a person doesn't know a decoy's age, then everything said before the point of stating the age cannot be used as evidence in a court of law. They must acknowledge that they are fully aware that they are talking to who they believe is a minor. And this is an important fact that hunters must get perfect right at the beginning. It's also good practice that many use to state their age many times throughout the conversation so that they're constantly reminded and can't say that they forgot, didn't realise, or a similar excuse. I went in and I made an account on kidschat.net and I started. I did catch I did catch a pedophile. These conversations can last for days, weeks, and even months. But the next step after having a pile of chat logs at your disposal is a bit more controversial among some people. Um I was very amateur, I was scared, I was overwhelmed, and I remember that chatting with this person, I was like confused. I was like, I do not know what to say to this guy. I know that I'm supposed to say what's my name, what's my age. Admittedly, this next part isn't done by every hunting group, but rather by offspring that reside on platforms like Facebook and YouTube. These groups will meet up with the predator they are speaking to, confront them in a public area, and either let them go or get them arrested. The hunters that let the predator go are very confusing to a lot of people. They have more than enough evidence to get a conviction, but they just let them get away with it so they can delete all the accounts and evidence. Your guess is as good as mine as to why they choose to go about it this way, but the smarter way is certainly to get the police involved. Other streaming groups will call the police and request that an officer is sent out to the location to make an arrest. Usually, an officer arrives within 10 minutes and takes a perpetrator into custody. This is where a complicated process begins of processing evidence and ensuring that chat logs are in check. This is where the quest of entrapment comes into the question. An example of legal entrapment would be if a police officer posed as a minor on the internet and convinced a person to commit an illegal act. This persuasion is seen as illegal under a lot of jurisdictions, so predator hunters have to be extremely careful to ensure that they do not break the law. Predators have to initiate every sexual act, otherwise a court case is at risk of being thrown out, and the hunters themselves at risk of prosecution. Some people have actually proposed a law making it illegal to pose as a 
child online in an attempt to tackle what the police call vigilantism. The fact that we do not know that these were turn indications is actually giving me the sign that they really don't care. The police need to step their game up, like ASAP, because of places like Chat Avenue, you know, places like them, um, Kids Chat, you know, Teen Chat, things like that, because I've actually looked at those websites and been exposed to some disgusting DMs. A majority of predator hunters would love to work with the police as 99% have good intentions. However, it proves to be a difficult task. The amount of reports that tip lines receive mean that the authorities could take months to get back to you, or they could just never inform you that they are picking up the case. Of course, law enforcement agencies have officers patrolling these sites, with bait accounts searching for predators. However, I am inclined to say that the amount of officers carrying out the task are dramatically outnumbered by the hunters and predators. Still though, the idea of joining forces makes some people nauseous. Hunters are often accused of acting on insufficient evidence and putting ongoing investigations in jeopardy, and they also say that stings are extremely dangerous due to the fact that the predator could be injured by themselves or another person. We're not corrupting your jobs. We're doing them for you since you're not paying attention to what you're supposed to be doing. Stings can be extremely dangerous, depending on a multitude of factors. Some of the more experienced groups tend to do stings in a private area, such as a decoy home or a deserted area. They will not raise their voices, they will place a predator under citizen's arrest, and they will contact the police as soon as possible. On the other side of the spectrum though, you have hunters who scream and shout at the predators, making everyone in the surrounding area aware of what they have done, putting them at risk of serious harm. There are many cases of this, such as when a sting was carried out in the middle of a supermarket and a predator was assaulted by a man who overheard the discussion. Another case occurred in August of 2022 when a man in Liverpool would slit his own throat on camera after being the victim of a sting. The man recovered and was arrested on suspicion of grooming a minor. These aren't the only cases and this is only one of the dangers of carrying out a sting not only in a public area but on a live stream for everyone to see. I don't disagree with the recording of a sting however as that is good evidence to prove that you did not assault or do anything illegal to the predator if they try to claim that. If they admit to their crimes on camera, then that is also solid evidence that can certainly be used in court. The difference between a video and a live stream is drastic when you consider the fact that it is possible for a sting to happen to the wrong person. This isn't just a possibility either, as it has happened on multiple occasions, and usually on live stream. This is dangerous for obvious reasons, but a main one being that what if someone clicked on a live stream, saw the face of the person being accused of being a predator clicked off the live stream without being made aware of the conclusion that the person was not a predator, they could go their whole life thinking that that person carried out unspeakable acts, and if they saw them in the street, then God knows what some people are capable of. We don't want to be called vigilantes, we don't want to be called terrorists, we don't want to be called anything like that, because at the end of the day, what we're doing is protecting children and doing a job law enforcement can't do. So, how do predator hunters feel about being branded as vigilantes? Do they love the title, or do they love it? I wouldn't call us vigilantes at all. I'd say, you know, we're, we're people on the internet that try to do the right thing. Personally, I don't really care if I'm called a vigilante. I'll neither accept it as a compliment or an insult. I call myself, I call myself just a, a person that is scavenging the internet to educate himself on certain stuff. Most people don't see hunters as vigilantes, but rather heroes in disguise. People try to push that title on them as some sort of attack, labelling them as nothing more than troublemakers and case destroyers. Most hunters aren't like that though, and most keep a level head as they carry out their own form of justice. So to a lot of people, these assumptions seem like a blatant attack on their credibility and ability. Another question is, where do all of these people originate from? What are their inspirations and what is the pushing factor behind them doing what they do? I saw one of Mama Max's videos where he did an investigation on Cartoon Incorporated. Mama Max was a very big um, influencer in what I do and I was a group formerly on Amino called the Wolf Angels as well. What made me start pedophile hunting was um, Mama Max, he, see, Max is like my idol. 
Apart from feeling that children are being failed and that they need to take justice into their own hands, it's clear that online predator hunters are having a massive effect on their audience. We'll use Mama Max for an example, as he was the one person mentioned across all three interviews, and it makes you wonder how many of his 700,000 subscribers have tried hunting a predator themselves. Of course, he isn't the only one though, as you've also got people like Anxiety War, Mike Fox, or the groups such as Dark Justice. Another question that this brings up is a question of, is this a dangerous effect that these hunters are having? If they're actively recruiting to their cause indirectly, then this could be having the opposite effect of what is intended. Of course, all these predator hunters have a goal of keeping children from harm, but if minors are watching these videos and hunting predators themselves, then doesn't that put them at risk? Think about the fact that for every minor you stop from seeing an explicit image sent by an adult, another one might get sent one on a decoy account that they own. But do the negatives outweigh the positives? I guess Yes, but maybe only if reports are made and things are carried out the right way. If you hunt a predator and you don't report him, what stops him from taking advantage of another child? Nothing. That's why official reports are so important, and keeping chat logs equally as important. When I approach a predator, I just like manipulate them to end their trust. These videos have so many views on social media because of morbid curiosity. People want to hear about a bad person being taken off the streets, and so the demand for these videos just keeps going up. To Catch a Predator is an early example of people tuning into this, and once that was axed, it just moved to Facebook and eventually YouTube. If TCAP was the first iteration, then this is a whole new generation. A lot of creator standards are much lower than that of a decent budget television show, so if TCAP couldn't even avoid the horrible reality of someone ending their own life as a result of being caught, then what's to say that an online creator couldn't have that on their hands? Understandably, some people would find that incredibly hard to live with if someone had ended themselves as a result of their amateur investigation. Say that it took these people maybe even a couple months. It it already would have been too late because this pedophile would have actually did it to somebody else. Maybe it's, um, even to a couple. Like, they would have already did it to multiple people and how I know this because they do it all the time. You let a pedophile go, they'll go to the next person. Moving away from the hunters, let's focus on law enforcement and the justice system and all of this. Most people agree that the sentences given to most predators are terrifyingly low. If you did a poll asking people what sentences they think predators should receive, I guarantee that it would end with a majority saying something in the 20 to 30 range. This isn't usually the case though, as it's been known that some predators have been given suspended sentences, sentences of less than 12 months, or in some cases, even less severe punishments. It seems that the average sentence, at least recently, is anywhere between 12 to 18 years. These figures have been taken from cases where the predator has committed some terrible acts, so they certainly aren't light, but not heavy for the crime either. It is also important to note that repeat offenders may get higher sentences in most cases. Studies carried out over the years have started to lean towards the fact that predators can be saved through therapy and counselling. They may be treated with long-term psychotherapy, or given drugs that alter the sex drive of an individual and reduce testosterone levels. This may not work for all predators, however, and some people still refuse to believe it can work for any. This treatment is mainly used before someone offends, say, if they are having thoughts and want to get help for it, then this is their option. It can often be hard for people to admit to these thoughts, as there are many articles about the stories of people who have suffered with intrusive thoughts of this nature, but it is certainly a good thing that this option is in place and that children are being helped by preventing would-be predators from offending. While it's been known for people to admit to their thoughts and get help, some people admit and embrace them. Some people call themselves MAPS, standing for Minor Attracted Person. These people don't want help for their thoughts and would rather have sexual contact with minors. These people have been known to be a problem on Twitter for a while, as there are many videos on the internet diving down the rabbit hole, and they tend to identify themselves with an emoji of a map. Most people tend to agree that the term MAP is just a pathetic attempt at predators trying to escape the word that has been used to describe them for so long, and a majority of people are 100% against it despite it being backed by many industries across the world. With as much as £2 million being donated by the EU to a project attempting to rebrand predators. The police should do more to imprison these predators. I wanted to hear firsthand from online predator hunters about their experiences and opinions on what they do, so I spoke to three of them to get insight. 
Well, my name is Steve, of course. Um, I make horror content based on disturbing topics or ARGs or basically anything that I find disturbing or intriguing on YouTube. So, you're a predator hunter. What enticed you to... to... Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I used, I used to be a pedophile hunter, yes. Right, so, at first, what enticed you to start hunting predators on the internet? Um, what started, what made me start pedophile hunting was, um, Mama Max. He, see, M Max is like my idol, of course, so, uh, of course, like, back then, I started pedophile hunting back in, um, back in September 2021, because I was watching one of his videos, specifically Puppy Stump mp 4 mm -hmm. and I was on my computer, I was, like, really tempted, because I was contemplating to myself, I was like, I really want to know what it feels like to be what Max is, you know, like what he's trying, what he's basically portraying on screen. So I basically, I went in and I made an account on kidschat.net, which is a chat site, of course. Uh, and I started, I did catch, I did catch a pedophile. I, I did, well, not catch, but I, I baited a pedophile onto me. Mm -hmm. um, I was very amateur. I was scared. I was overwhelmed. And I remember that chatting with this person, I was like confused. I was like, I do not know what to say to this guy. I know that I'm supposed to say, what's my name? What's my age? Which, not my real age, but like a fake age yeah. with a decoy. But I was like, so i was like, so scared yeah that must I have been like very daunting at first to like it was daunting because because like i was and then he won the video call i was like oh my goodness he wants to video call so that i so i said i sucked i sucked it up and i went to the call and then the man was just masturbating to me and i was it was inside i was like what in the world is this, this is what max does to people is does he just watch these guys jerk i was like confused i was i was like honestly disgusted well uh i go by a lot of names summer and jackass you know, things like that um i hunt pedophiles that that's there's no fucking way to sugarcoat it i hunt pedophiles uh, have done for a few years and um that's really about it really Fair, fair. So, you hunt paedophiles. What enticed you to start the whole thing? Um, it, it began when, I don't know, I think it was about 14, I think, some, something like that, 14. Um, I was on an app called Amino, because I um, was formally introduced to it when I was a kid, because I was into fucking the, the, whole, the whole craze of going over there and interacting with other people. Um, a year on, um, after experiencing some of this bullshit myself, like these disgusting people that go after children, they entice them to do things that's against the law, things like that. that that's when I started to realise, what the fuck is this place? What the hell is going on? And can I make a goddamn difference to it? So from that point on, I devoted, well, for the past three years, every second of my free time to getting rid of, disposing of, I'm ensuring that these people are put behind bars because I was that fucking disgusted at what I saw. Hello everyone, my name is Omega. I also go by Rasako Matsuda. And you are a predator hunter. That is correct. So, what enticed you to start this whole thing? What enticed you to hunt predators? So, around 2020, when the COVID pandemic was at its apex, I saw one of Mama Max's videos where he did a investigation on cartoon incorporated mm. which by the way is speculated to be real or fake but i think personally i think it's real and seeing that section where he hunted down the predators i thought it was like pretty interesting and i wanted to try it out i was 17 at the time so i was hesitant to hunting predators as because since i'm underage that would like put me in danger and stuff so i just like waited until i was older could you like run me through the methods you use to hunt predators like what is the process how do you go about it all right so the methods i use to hunt predators well basically i just like make a catfish account with um proton mail and try to find some pictures that look convincing and edit them out so people wouldn't reverse search and when I approach a predator, I just like 
manipulate them to gain their trust. And whenever possible, I just try to get their IP address. Predator hunters are people that aren't going away anytime soon, no matter how often they are branded as dangerous and actively pushed away. Predators are going to exist on the internet, so if the police aren't putting enough resources into catching them, then can you blame hunters for taking things into their own hands? As long as everything is done right and a conviction is at the front of a hunter's mind, then they are of assistance to the police, at least in my opinion. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on hunters and the many controversies surrounding them. Everyone I spoke to in this channel will have a link to their social encoded in the description and I recommend you check them out. As always, thank you to my Patreon supporters Morrigan, Neil, Alex Rod, k Silver, Entrepreneur, Collectiki, and Cynic Zally for your continued support that makes these videos possible. Thank you all for watching.